Yeah, I want to put out a tip out there for people uh, like me who <laughs> don't know how to weld it right, but uh, I've done this before, though. Um, you know, I'll get it so it's welded, but it's sloppy. You might have some pinholes in it. It'll The metal will be sticking, though. I got some good penetration for the most part. And uh, the one mistake I made with the bottom of this door was... Um, I know body people that do automotive work, they usually use 18 gauge or even 20 gauge to fix panels. And most people wouldn't even try to fix the bottom of this door because it wasn't just the door skin that was rotted out. It was the door itself where the door skin goes to. But just to save money, I figured I'd make some panels. So I did a 16 gauge and that was a bitch to work with. I went up putting 18 gauge to finish it off and I put some 16 ga 18 gauge over the 16 gauge because I couldn't bend the 16 gauge good enough. All this crap. So I got it like three panels in there you, you can't tell because I just uh, I just put uh, some 3M panel adhesive over it and that's my tip um, if you say for instance you got some sloppy wells with pinholes and say you got your body panels fairly well lined up and you could you could fill them in with some say Dyna glass like this right or just a Bondo glass um, now I remember when Dyna glass you know the, the real stuff this is the same shit though by Bondo I remember when Dynaglass came out in the 70s, I think it was the late 70s or the mid 70s, and they, and they advertised it as waterproof. Well, in a way it is. It's unaffected by water, but it will, the water will go through the Dynaglass and any plastic, regular Bondo, you know, that you have on it, will bubble up. The Dynaglass itself will not be affected, it will not fall apart. But any Bondo you put on it will get fucked up, excuse me, but get screwed up if you have a pinhole in the back whereby moisture can get to it. So, I know like in a door, I can get on the inside of it, coat it really good. But what I did on these wells, um, I actually, uh, you can see there's a, I'm supposed to use this gun with it, with a trigger that puts the content of the, uh, the hardener and the actual stuff, whatever you call this, this is the, this is the 3M um, panel adhesive for gluing on quarter panels. It's pretty expensive stuff. It's like 35 bucks for this little thing, but you don't need a lot of it. And I already used it. I already this is only my second one I've used uh, for like um, two cars actually and other uses. But it's part number eight one. Yeah, eight zero eight one one five three M. This junk, I've just put a real skim coat over that, and I made sure I ground down the wells really good with the grinder here, that grinder, and uh, I actually even went over them with the wire brush two different ways, forward and backwards, so it was sort of like clean. Then I used uh, starting fluid to chemically clean it, and you know wiped it down with paper towels. Then I put a skim coat, just I mixed it up just like plastic. And the way I use this is, um, I'll put the squeegee up against my chest, and or some kind of piece of metal up against my chest, and I'll just squeeze this evenly, the contents out to like a piece of tile or something, a mixing board, and I just mix it up like Bondo plastic. Now the thing is with this junk, you got a lot of time to work with that stuff. It isn't like uh, working with plastic, you got 20 minutes or some shit at the max. Um, it takes, it really takes 24 hours for it to dry. So you got it, you can mess with this stuff for a good 30 minutes, easy. You know, it's not ready to be sanded for like maybe a day. But what I did was, um, I went over the whole, all the wells. I just welled here in the front, I got to grind down a little more of it. I had to, I have to dig out my air compressor for my little grinder, the one up in the front. But I got all the wells covered. So when I put the Dyna glass on it, I'll you know grind this down uh, or get it with 80 or something. And when I put the Dyna glass on it, there's going to be a moisture impermeable barrier behind the Dyna glass, even if I don't coat it with anything. Now this comes in handy, say for instance if you're doing. Um, I don't know, some place on a car you can't get to the back of it, like say on a quarter panel. You can't get to the back of it that good. If you put this coat over your porous wells, 
you will it'll stop any moisture to getting on those uh, on the bondo or the door or the door glass. And like I said, the door glass is not affected by the moisture, but it gets inside the door glass enough that it, anything on top of it is affected. I found that out the hard way back in the 70s, you know, working with a, because we were working with uh, that product when it was brand new. We're looking at the advertisements, uh, totally waterproof and all. Yeah, right. It's not fiberglass, man. It's just, uh, well, as you know, today, back in the 70s, nobody knew what the hell exactly what it really did. It's good stuff, but it's not, it's, it's better than fiberglass because it's got a little, it's got a tiny bit of flex to it, though. Fiberglass can crack. Now, this door, I don't think it's going to screw up, even with if I put a, quite a bit of that shit on it because it's got way more metal than the original, man. It's like reinforced like crazy. But uh, it'll look all right when I'm done. But uh, I just wanted to pass on this tip because uh, I know I know loads of people that are like welders like me. Um, I come out here every once in a while for about 30 minutes or so. Even 11.30 at night, I'll weld something up. And I can't see what the hell I'm doing half the time, even though I got light on. And, you know, I get a little pinhole. Those pinholes are bad news. Because, um, and I'm not using a MIG welder, I'm using a flux. I'm not using a gas. I'm a cheapie. But uh, the way you can get around that, though, to fill up all those pinholes. And even something like, I would do this anyway. Because even if you don't see a pinhole... Because I, I couldn't see any pinholes from this side, but when I shone a light through it really strong on the other side, I saw some pinholes. I said, oh. But, you know, it's coated with this. This is waterproof. Waterproof is all hell. So when a dining glass goes over it, if, even if water got on the inside, it ain't going to matter. Plus, it'll be coated on the inside anyway. But um, I can't say enough about this product, man. I use it the wrong way for a lot of shit. I've used this product. And if you got like a tiny, tiny little hole someplace or something really small and you want to use say like um, what's that shit again uh, uh, JB Weld this stuff is vastly superior to JB Weld at least in effort as far as adhesion purposes it's like um, I tried some stuff with JB Weld and I like JB Weld I think it's pretty good stuff but this stuff is a lot stronger. It's more money, but it's freaking incredible. It's some incredible stuff. What I like about it, though, it's uh, it's unlike a lot of glue-like, plastic-y products that you put on. This stuff, I think, is really damn permanent. Um, like I don't consider something like this really permanent. You know, maybe it will last there for decades, but. It, this is in a league of itself as far as like adhesives go. I never seen anything like that shit in my life. So if you got some crappy wells, you grind them down. You got some maybe you got some porosity to it. You're afraid a little moisture is going to come through it. Put a skim coat of this stuff on it. And like I said, it, this stuff is not that much money if you don't have the gun. Like the gun is like a hundred bucks. I said, well, I ain't going to spend the money on that shit because I'm not putting on quarter panels. I just I put these two things. In here on the bottom like that and I press I press it against my chest I'll either have a metal plate on my chest or a squeegee and just mix it up like plastic and uh, as far as I'm concerned this is gonna come out okay anyway and uh, it'll look better than it was There'll be no rust this is the thing that was I should I should not have used eight I should not have used 16 gauge uh, on the bottom of this door because I was ha I was having too much problem shaping the metal when I put this 18 up here It was no problem So I'm gonna use 18 on the opposite side of the door and I'll, the other door it'll be a lot easier So that's my tip. You got a shitty weld with a lot of porosity uh, You're afraid moisture is gonna get put through that weld And you're like me an amateur welder get some of this junk grind down Grind down that weld, then maybe um, you know use a wire brush on it, chemically clean it, and put this junk on it like uh, just a skim coat. You don't need much. You know, like this stuff, I used. This was halfway used up. I used maybe a quarter of this. So I used uh, about seven, eight bucks worth of this shit. Maybe not even a quarter. 
quarter of yeah about 78 bucks worth of it that's about it that's all I did to me that's worth it because uh, no way in hell is, it, is the water going to get behind that well now it's uh, it's it's waterproof as all hell so anyway just a quick simple update for people that uh, don't know how to do this shit because uh, I know everybody else is running into this problem that doesn't know how to do this shit like me and when you do that and you put this over your porosity weld and you put say fiberglass or plastic over it it's not going to bubble up because it's waterproof with this junk that's important